Hi, my name is David Drake. Pleasure being here talking to everybody about the modernization and modernizing international trade through digitization. Uh, you know, I've been involved with crypto and blockchain for the last 10 years and uh, been very excited about what's been developing globally on that aspect of it. And it makes a lot of sense, you know, to me, blockchain is a accounting software. And to put it in layman terms, the way I look at it is, let's say a crypto has 10,000 computers maintaining that crypto globally. Each one of those 10,000 computers, as an example, have the same ledger and they have registered input and output on that ledger and they all have to agree. And each time a ledger input is added, 10,000 computers agree on that. And it continues every single transaction to add on top of it. And that's why I look at it as a, uh, you know, um, accounting software solution that makes it immutable because you can't change anything that's been added. And that's why this has been taking the world as a storm and it has a long way to still to go. But we're going to see a lot of trade through digitization being, being helped in this space. Personally, I was born and raised in Stockholm, Sweden. Came over to the US 30 years ago and had a chance to build my fortune in New York City from venture capital and real estate to mining and metals, as well as venture capital, private equity deals and capital markets. Today, we have office representations in Kiev, Dubai, Hong Kong, Seoul, obviously New York is the headquarters. And we've been doing business around the globe for the last few decades, which has been fascinating and interesting to be able to handle international businesses and getting involved with different regions of the world. I must say, I've been truly enjoying it myself for the last few years, uh, being able to handle all kinds of transactions in private equity and capital markets. Now, what we're going to see here with blockchain and digitization is that it is a force to reckon with. It just makes things faster, more accurate, and automates processes, as well as paperwork. Let's go to the next page. So there you go. The global pandemic heightened the need for contract-free solutions and digitized trade. And I'll tell you what, personally, uh, during COVID, my family ended up working really close, uh, staying at home and you know, seeing the kids growing up, which has been absolutely amazing. And on the flip side, people that I didn't used to be able to reach personally on the phone, they would only take face-to-face -face meetings. During COVID and the, the pandemic, uh, they have become readily available through WhatsApp and video conferences. So I've seen a lot of efficiency happening during the pandemic from working longer hours and not spending time driving, traveling at lunches, flying. Uh, I see a huge efficiency in my world of work, being able to reach people across the world that are now embracing video conferencing. So I've been enjoying that. So the question once again, what, why blockchain? Well, that's like I said before, you know, to me, blockchain is a so uh, accounting software. Assume 10,000 computers are maintaining a crypto like Bitcoin, as an example. This is publicly visible. You can see every single transaction online and everything transaction is added one after one, which means it's immutable. You can't change it back. And that's why it's become such a powerful force for Wall Street firms and companies, even logistics has become far, far more advanced and uh, solidified this year in 2021 than ever before. And we still have a long way to go. There's not that many uh, business to consumer products out there yet. Most of these solutions for the last few years has been B2B and um, wholesale and infrastructure solutions. But um, as I said, why blockchain for the international trade is because it can be reduction in documentation, it's going to be automatically uh, matching up as well as being able to do consolidation of transactions and businesses, logistics, et cetera, will be able to track thoroughly. And let's go on and talk about how that's going to look for the rest of the world. So we're going to use international trade and the space. And here you go. Well, obviously, the infrastructure of blockchain has been building for the last 10 years and it still has a long way to go. And these decentralized marketplaces cannot be sh shut down. That's one advantage. And you know that would allow us to use certain advantages in trade that be automated. 
from letter of credit to cross-border payment systems. And we're starting to see a lot of M&A in that space of cross-border payment systems and results of platforms that started working on this years ago coming to fruition right now. It, they do a lot of uh, work on this in insurance, and all of it is about automating and potentially reducing the middlemen to make this more efficient and faster. And it would allow you to get third-party certifications on verification, copyrights, uh, ownership, and uh, contracts, which allows a more efficient world for international trade. And obviously, in the luxury world is using this for the luxury product. And interestingly enough, they're now going into the NFT space, the non-fungible token space. And that's really, uh, you know, the word for imagine if you have a painting and you do a limited edition of that painting, a little graph, so to say, and it's signed 200 times. And that's what NFTs are. They're digital collectibles. And the luxury brands out there are now getting into the digital collectible world because people can collect all of their jewelry or the luxury products in 3D even on their phone. So there's a revolution going in that area that's going to be interesting to follow as there's a lot of numbers, a lot of mainstream articles are coming out about that. And here we go. So the advantage of blockchain and trade. Um, we have talked about some of that and we're going to go to, to several of them over here. Obviously, you see here from the get go, you have real time previewing and real time access to what's happening in the trade financing. And that gives you more transparency in factoring. And like I said before, we're removing the intermediaries and there's no double spending. Only one thing has to be done once, which is you know, very important in this area. The proof of ownership, regulations, smart contract execution is automated. These are the benefits of trade finance. And it's moving towards it uh, slower than expected, but it is happening and it's moving forward globally. And we see these in trade finance on a global basis growing in the space. And now we're going to just talk about how this is going to be working out in trade finance specifically. And here we go quite advanced. It's a good page for you guys to look at. And you can actually have trading partners agreeing on agreements and smart contracts initiating an order, payments being automated by the buyer, as well as receiving finance from the seller. And the logistics part of the shipment of the product is important because, you know, you would be able to make an order of a, a sensitive product such as meat and track the container of meat coming over uh, the waters. And if you have tracking of the temperature, you might know the temperature and the air conditioning in the container broke down. So before the shipment arrived, you know that you cannot sell that to restaurants. And you might call up a, let's say, a pet supplier and say, look, I got a meat of shipping coming in. It's ruined. I can't send it to the restaurant. The air conditioning broke down. But we can mince it up and create you know, pet food out of it. And now you can adjust the logistic aspect of tracking of goods by knowing if it's been tampered, if it's lost temperature or pressure or, or being overheated and ruined uh, logistics for food. That's one example of how this system could be tremendously valuable and in reducing inefficiencies globally. And then, of course, the trade finance will allow you to settle these trades automatically and everybody gets payments since the escrow is handling automatically on the crypto. I want to have you guys absorb this a little more, but on the logistics side of things, the automation in this example I gave you is just, you know, a, a example that I came up with to show you how the tracking of goods could be extremely valuable for people planning what to do with it should there be interference, delay, a storm, a loss, or uh, let's say the air conditioning didn't work anymore and the food is ruined by the time it arrives in port. These things are important to know, and these things could be automated with maybe having a temperature gauge that's connected to satellite, allowing you to check the temperature on that container on a regular basis. And that's how you set that up. I mean, imagine every time you pick a, a bunch of apples, put into a crate, and you record the code on that crate that goes up to satellite and records it on blockchain. Now you know it was put into a crate there, and each time they scan that code into the truck and out of the truck, that will be going up to the blockchain. You can always track where, when, and what that shipment of apples came from. And one day when we walk in the supermarket, we'll be able to track every single product in the supermarket 
where it really came from with authentication of tracking it step by step in the supply chain. And that I'm very excited about. And it's taking a lot longer for that to come into fruition, but a lot of corporations around the world, including, including maritime and shipping, are all pursuing this. And the key stakeholders, players in the industry and the trade ecosystem, let's talk about them as two. These are the players who's gonna be taking advantage of these trade systems automata automations with digitizations. You have exporters and importers, of course, commercial banks, insurance companies. It's going to automate these processes, and the documentation will be readily available online. And the contracts, as well as the, docu uh, and the verifications, and all of these customs authorities, important and the airport authorities, and government agencies will be able to be automated, verified, and available and accessible to everybody with transparency. That's what I call trade efficiency globally, as I do a lot of business myself around the world. So is blockchain the future of trade finance? Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. And it shouldn't be a doubt in your mind at all. So that's a long experience of my trade experience in uh, tra international trade. It helps a lot of efficiencies. I personally love the fact that we have our, uh, uh, transparency and the vision into how we deal with uh, logistics and tracking of product products and verification. For instance, I know in the olive oil business, there's a lot of fraudulent olive oil that is not made from origination. And now with blockchain, you can actually track olives in the oil making process from Greece or Italy all the way to the store to verify its authenticity. There's a huge issue just in that industry. And you're gonna find that in, in the issue in most product, produce where you can create something cheaper uh, 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 with a different brand on the, around the globe. So you're gonna be redu reducing um, uh, fraud and uh, fake goods around the globe. And that's why the you know, industry of uh, luxury is embracing this as well. Now, I'm glad I had a chance to talk to everybody. You know, my firm is always looking for smart people out there, and hopefully we'll have some smart, energetic people watching this presentation. Feel free to reach out to me here. Uh, we're always in, uh, interested in uh, being engaged with the younger generation coming into this space who wants to learn and make a difference in the world. Uh, we have a a summer internship program too so feel free to reach out to me and i'm always readily available by email it's a good way to reach me i want to thank everybody today for listening and i look forward to coming back here and sharing my stories again goodbye <laughs>